Welcome to this week inside sim racing, September 23rd, 2015 edition. I'm John Sable, along here with Darren Ganji, and have another great show this week. And also before run off, we're going to talk about our first show in a more European friendly time. Yes. Welcome to our European friendly time. And hopefully we get lots of viewers at this time. I mean, this is going to be a test. We're going to see how it works out. And if we match or better our viewership this week, we'll probably, probably alternate back and forth. Yeah. So we're going to see how it works out. Yep. So uh, this week's show, we're going to be talking the Sim Expo happened over the weekend and uh, a lot of news out of there, so going to talk about that. Uh, going to talk about um, iRacing and Kenny Humphy winning the... Humpy. Humpy. God, I'm trying. That's Humpy. one of my favorite names in all of Sim Racing. <laughs> That's a good name. So um, Kenny's a great guy. He clinched up the championship last night, so we're going to talk about that and a little more about iRacing dynamic track. Um... Part of that Sim Expo race room showed off the Nordschleife for the first time, and uh, Game Stock Car also had some new footage of their their Lancer in, vo in both Rallycross and then today in uh, in GT form. So we're gonna look at that, and um, yeah, first off, did you forget off, about this? I say we're getting there. Club Sport handbrake unboxing. That's right. It's gonna be our first live unboxing. It is. So let's exciting keep... stuff. It is. And we just got this yesterday. Yesterday, so somebody had a had requested um, or asked if if it worked in I think Forza Horizon Two, and and the, I think there's two different ways you can connect this thing. One, you can plug it in. Gotta love Fanatic Boxing, and they have the classiest yeah, they're really nice in all of sim racing. Oh, he the knife again. Uh, someone had asked if it worked in Forza Horizon 2, and I don't know if you know this, but you can plug this into a port on the Club Sport pedals. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think you can also do it as a standalone USB uh, peripheral. Gotcha. So on the... See, now I don't know how that would work, though, like on Forza, because you can't remap controls. Yeah, mm -hmm. I I feel like... Yeah, I don't, I don't think you could run it separately. You know what? I saw a prototype of this many, many years ago. Mm -hmm. This thing's heavy. I mean, heavy duty. It's not heavy. It's light, lightweight. No. Oh, you know, it is actually lighter than I thought it would be. So, we've got... This is the port. Oh, this is interesting. It's got like a mini jack. Ooh. Not even, I should actually try to go the right direction. <laughs> so, there's the port that goes into the Club Sport pedals. Oh, you guys can see that. It's a little tiny connector there and then it's got a 3.5 millimeter uh, that goes into the bottom here interesting cool and then what's this, this well that, is... those connections are the pedals those are the same connections that uh well no this will co this will go into the wheel oh that's right that goes into the wheel You're this right. goes into the pedal so okay. it looks like this is not a, a standalone usb peripheral so you, it looks like you have to plug it into either the the wheel base or the pedal base Mm-hmm. So cool. Hmm. So we're going to be checking this out. I will say, we did get a question on Twitter. Someone, uh, I don't have the name pulled up, but someone was asking about a good way to mount this. And looking this over... Those look like... Yeah, these are threaded. M6. Yeah. So I, th I think he was looking maybe to mount it more to like a desk, like maybe not didn't necessarily have a rig. But I honestly, it's probably pretty hard with, unless, you know, kind of got to go hard mount. I mean, to some degree, you could almost put some straps around here. If you, you have, but, to have a strap pretty tight. Yeah, that's some strap. Maybe some rubber. Velcro's not going to work. No, this not thing, Velcro. This thing's heavy. No, you would have to have as like as far as the mechanism goes. Yeah, you have to have some rubber straps or maybe some tie downs and and have maybe it sitting against something on the back side to make so sure. So are it we going to mount this like it be in a in a regular car like this, or are we going to mount it like this? I like it more like this. Me too. Which should be able. We got plenty of eighty twenty, so should be able to do that no problem. Oh. I guess someone's girlfriend likes you. AC Francis, his girlfriend's birthday, and she wants a shout out. And it sounds like she wants it. Oh, yep. Yeah. She <laughs> thinks you're hot. <laughs> <laughs> Give her a shout out. What's uh, her name, AC? Yeah, we need we need we need names. <laughs> we need names, then we need Mike. You're my, gonna no, say shout out to AC Francis's girlfriend. I AC Francis's girlfriend. So give us her, give us her name, AC, and John will John will give her a shout out. Wow! And hi and hi to my girlfriend. She's watching. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Andrea's 
got some friends at work uh, that watch. Uh, they think you're hot too. Oh man, so John, John's I guess a hot commodity Doing, amongst the women. You know, I take the glasses off and put a cap on. And... <laughs> oh, yeah, all hell breaks loose. <laughs> all hell breaks loose. <laughs> All right. Uh, so anyway, there's the. We're gonna be reviewing this soon. I can't wait to try it with Dirt Rally. Yes, that's gonna be sweet. Absolutely. And I, I am interested to see how it works on the on the consoles as well, um, and if it is compatible. Mm -hmm. So, cool. So uh, up next, we're gonna talk. Get into Sim Sim it's Expo. Ellie. Ellie. Okay. Say hi to Ellie. Hi Ellie. <laughs> that's a good name. I like Ellie. That's a good name. Uh, Sim Expo and first kicking off with some iRacing coverage and here's a video of the someone shot of the Z4 going around the Nordschleife. Yeah, I, you know what? I thought they were going to have the, the Nurburg GP course available at the Expo and I mean it looks like this is going to be released soon. Mm -hmm. It's looking pretty friggin awesome too. Yeah, they said that it was funny because I mean everyone's kind of like it looks done but I guess some of the guys there from iRacing were saying well no these trees are just stand-ins and we got the proper trees and it's missing a bunch of trees. Stand in trees. Stand in trees. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah, we got um so we got that going and then also here's another video going to queue up. And this one is really cool. This is kind of the scenic tour of Norse life. And it's watch Greg Hill, the uh, yes. he's like their main track designer. Look how far they modeled. That's pretty amazing. That is insane. I wonder how this thing's going to do frame rate wi frame rate wise, <laughs> uh, because I wonder what he's pointing out there in the. the, the it's distance, it's, it's the a mo it's a monument. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I'm definitely concerned frame rate wise. Of course, the only good thing is when you're driving, you're pretty much just in a sea of trees, so you don't catch all this stuff. But I don't know. Well, look at some of the tracks like uh, Suzuka Spa. Mm -hmm. You know, as you come across the. Uh, you know, the start finish in the paddock, it always seems to, to take a frame rate hit. You know what? Hopefully, a lot of this is going to change once they go to DX11. Yes. Uh, but maybe he's pointing different things out. Yeah, there was a fan saying there was like a, a tunnel there, so that was kind of neat. Hey, you know, what the, you know what's missing? <laughs> Look at that. Awesome. What's missing? All the uh, graffiti. Yes, and I, I, I believe that's. I believe they're doing it. I don't know. I haven't heard either way, but I'd be really surprised they didn't. I would be too. But I kind of, I kind of see that as being one of the last things done. I mean, honestly, I can't believe they're this far. Me too. Like oh, I said, I was expecting only to see uh, uh, the GP course. Mm -hmm. So here's a, a quick flyby. By the way, we went to 720p this week. Uh, sorry, Ricky, 1080p. <laughs> uh, but anyway, we went to 780p this week to try to eliminate some of that uh, that mo that hiccuping, that, mm -hmm. you know, the frame glitching that we've been getting. So, you know, we're not sure what was causing it, but I, I read some stuff, and going to 70 720p supposedly helps with some of that. Actually, I'm watching it right now, and it looks it looks good. Yeah, it looks good so far. So, if you guys see some frame glitches, nice hand there, Greg Hill. If you guys see some frame glitches, let us know in chat, and uh, just so we know where it happened. Um, so, Look anyway, at, what else we got from there? Oh man, I'm just kind of blown away by there's the castle in this town. I mean, just Taking insane. Taking a tour of Nordschleife. Oh, everything. I mean, look. Ah, that is amazing. I hope they put a camera up there on top of that tower. Martin um, Arts asked, does AC have laser scan tracks? Yeah, as a matter of fact, Nordschleife is laser scanned in a set of Corsa. Not all of their tracks are laser scanned. A handful of them are, but uh, I know Nordschleife is one of them. Yep. And, uh, you know, I racing all of their tracks, as far as we know, are laser scanned. Mm -hmm. but yeah, it looks amazing, and I can't wait. We gotta boot up, uh, we gotta boot up the alpha version. We do, we do. Take it for a test spin. Mm-hmm. Okay, so uh, moving away from this topic and on to a new content announcement from iRacing, and it's the Audi R8 LMS GT3 car. So you, how do you pronounce the, the car name? Audi. Audi. I, I pronounce it Audi. Oh, okay. So curious from <laughs> our European friends. Especially the German ones. Yeah. How do you pronounce it? The way John said it or the way I said it? i uh, also like to give a, a shout out to IA Systems Computer Controls. Uh, I can't think of your name off the top of my head, but he's the guy that developed the motorcycle controls. Okay. 
Uh, and man, it's been a while since we talked, and I'm sorry I forgot your name. Uh, you know, I, as I'm getting older, I, I'm forgetting names more. I don't know if I'm developing Alzheimer's. See, or I just never learned them to begin with. It's just old man syndrome. So don't, hey, Wim, I saw your comment about feeling old, so don't feel bad, man. I'm 47, so I, I would imagine you're, we're pretty close to the same age. Uh, but anyway, shout out to him. And um, Darren is correct, I think. Darren is right. Darren, you are correct. <sighs> to be fair, I can't pronounce A's okay. well. Like, I can't, I can't say, like, if you're eating, like, a salad. I can't. Or a solid, I, I struggle. Let's. Um, we don't. We don't. We, we don't need to get into my complexes. Okay. If I if I just sit here and smile and look. Say pretty, Audi. Audi. There you go. Audi. There we go. You said it right. Okay. I'll say I'm just gonna sit here and just look pretty the rest of the time. Alan. Be Beaten. I think the Alan Beaten. I think is your last name. Anyway, Alan, how you doing, buddy? Dude, we we got to work out a way to get us those motorcycle controls. So if you guys are wondering what I'm talking about, Alan has created, in, Alan, set, put a link in the chat if you if you remember, uh, or if you've got one, to something that you, you know, a video or something so the guys can check it out here. He has developed motorcycle controls, which motorcycle titles pretty much suck with game pads. Yeah. I mean, you it, it, with anything, you can get the hang of it, but anyway, man, I want to I wanna throttle on, I want to have a clutch, you know, mm -hmm. lever, mm -hmm. and he's developed it. And anyway, getting getting off topic here, but let's go back to the yeah. Sim Racing Expo. Speaking of which, yes. Sim Racing Expo, Andreas Nee was there for us. Um, Actually, and let me wait one second. Go yeah, ahead. and uh, we're gonna have some some coverage from the Sim Racing Expo that that Andreas got to us, got for us. Hopefully, we're gonna have him on the show next week. So stay tuned for that. Uh, but we, and we have some basic stuff. I, I put in the in the description that we're going to talk about the ADAC. We really got nothing. For, or did you find some stuff for that? I got pictures. Okay. So, so um, did you did you got the who won it? Uh, yeah, I do. Okay. I got, I got, so we'll talk I, about that in a minute. Yep, we'll get there. Uh, one thing going back to iRacing real quick, and they have quite the backlog of cars. They're adding this R8, and then they. What kind of car is it? Audi. Nope. Damn it. Audi. Aud you know what? Audi. Ow. <laughs> Just remember, ow. Ouch. Ow. ow. Audi. So anyway. It's going to be nice to get this McLaren in, in, in iRacing. On the screen, the we're, yes. Car. On the screen, we're looking at three cars that have all been announced over the last year. In fact, the Aston Martin Vantage was announced at the Sim Expo last year, and we still haven't heard anything about it. Uh, the McLaren, we think, should be coming about the end of the year. And then what was even more interesting, when they announced the R8, in the statement they said that the Mercedes here, which looks bitchin', I think it looks sweet. is coming soon. Like they kind of they kind of hinted like that that's coming soon. So um, yeah, I expect to see that Mercedes by the end of the year, which uh, very excited. I mean, people say another GT3 car. All their GT3 cars are pretty much old now. The Z4 is going away. The MP4 dash. 12C McLaren, they don't run anymore. The Ford GT, they just kind of Ford, threw in there. Ford GT's been gone forever. And then the roof, we want to get in the conversation how to pronounce roof or rough? <laughs> I say go, roof. I think it's roof. But, uh, you know, that's kind of like a pseudo Porsche. So they need these new cars. You know, the Aston Martin, um, the Mercedes. The the Merce They're going to do a GT3 Aston Martin too, right? Yeah, that's what I was showing. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's what that was. So the Vantage, the AMG Mercedes, and uh, and now that R8, those are cars that are currently running in the Blanc Pond series. <laughs> someone, someone's like Blanc Punk, Blanc Block Pain. You know, I watched whatever. I watched the race over the weekend. It was a really good race. I love watching that series, and it sounds like it's Blanc Pond. And what about the Bentley? Isn't there a Bentley? In there that is series? a Bentley. The, and the Bentley is awesome, and also the Nissan GT3, which is in came out in a set of Corsa in part of the Dream Pack, that's in there. Rough. Someone says roof, someone says rough. Oh, man. <laughs> any, any Germans in the house? Oh, funny. Or close to Germany? <laughs> funny comment by Dead Work Productions, uh, RIP BTCC Civic 2012. Do you remember when they announced that? They said that the, the BTCC, British Touring Car Championship, Civic, they announced that like three or four years ago. And like they never got the data from Honda. I remember that. And then well, it just they never... came out, what's that? What is it, a Kia? 
What, what is that other car? A Kia o- Optima that yeah. came out. That's in iRacing. That's in iRacing. That was a strange, I guess that was like a sponsor thing. I guess they paid them and they kind of like whipped that together and put that out. Europe is laughing at you, John. I, I deserve it. <laughs> oh, and yes, it's Nissan here, by the way, not Nissan. We pronounce it Nissan in the States and it's been like that for a long time. We know you pronounce it Nissan in other parts of the world, but here in the States, all of their advertising. As a matter of fact, I worked for, I worked in commercials. And we did, I worked on the original 300ZX Turbo commercials. Wow. And it was Nissan. So, anyway, that's how it's pronounced here. We know we have differences in how we pronounce some words, but that's the way we say it here. Yes. So, Boy, um, this this show, too much fun. So, we got a pretty good viewership right now. We're coming up about 150. I think our, our record mm-hmm. was last week we had 175. Mm-hmm. So... Find us 25 more viewers, guys, so we can we can match last week's. I think we're going to just alternate. Alternate. And I kind of even wonder about splitting the difference a bit. Maybe going an hour later than today, trying two hours at one point. We'll see. Yeah, what do you guys think about that? If we start an hour later than we did today, does that still work for you guys? That, that's still reasonable. You can watch us before going to bed or whatnot. So um, what else we got from, uh, from uh, the Sim Racing Expo? Man, I we got to figure out a way to get there. One of us at least next I, year. I agree. So next up, we are watching uh, Race Room. This is courtesy of P1 TV. This video came out today on YouTube. They actually gave you permission? No. <laughs> <laughs> I took it. I'd like to thank them for letting us steal it from them. But I'm sure, footage. I'm sure they'll take the cross promotion. But um, yeah, it looks like I think they're driving the last generation or current generation, however you look at it, R8. Okay, around. Let's, give them a sh- let's give them a shout out really quick. Did you watch? Did you see what else? They, they only cover... Sim racing stuff. Yes, I've seen some of their stuff. In German, though, it sounds like. Yes. Uh, but that's cool. It's like a, a German inside sim racing. Mm-hmm. No, it is very cool. But yeah, they got this footage. Here's the Norse life. Oh, follow Wait. us. Look at that. They're getting even more promotion. There you, you go. Check out their, their stuff there. But they, um, this track is a lot, this version is a lot further along than what I thought. So that's pretty cool. So now we got some more images from the sim racing expo. Yes, and, here's, and here is the. ADAC Championship. Is that the champion right there? Is that, this the guy? That is a champion. Tim is, Heinerman. And he is the defending champion, so... So... He successfully defended his crown from last year. So he's back-to-back. Back. He's back-to-back. So what, does to he back. win? Just the trophy? Does he... I don't... I didn't hear anything about a cash prize, but... Uh, if anybody man. knows what he won besides the trophy, let us know. That's... That's pretty... Look how many people... Look how many setups they had. They had a lot. I didn't... I, I was trying to find a number of how many people they had total. And I couldn't find it, but it was a bracket style tournament, and they were doing like top twelve advancing and stuff like that. Hey guys, English, English in the chat room. You guys are confusing us here, Wim. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it's you know, I I thought I saw a stat on their website that said twelve thousand people went through the expo. Uh huh. Um, they had fifty four rigs set up, which is pretty cool. But I gotta say, I race for life. Oh, I said. We had 50, about 50-something 50 rigs last year set yeah. up at iRace for Life. It sh- from the pictures, it sure looked like there was more than 50 rigs. But Speaking of which, we're going to broadcast live from iRace for Life next year. Yep. Uh, both of us plan on going, so that, that should be a lot of fun. Uh, and I think we're going to be one of the main sponsors, so we're going to do a lot more promotion, try to get some more people to get mm-hmm. down there for it. Mm-hmm. So anyway, um, congratulations to Tim Heinerman if you're watching. Hopefully I didn't butcher your name there. It looks like I got pretty close. I think so. Hein, like Heineken, Heinerman. So yeah, it was a bracket style tournament, and I guess he knew what he was doing because he won it again. Clearly. So yeah, no, really cool. So we also had uh, Poland Power. I'm part Polish, by the way. I just saw somebody, Kiz, Kiz Onyx. Um, so oh, so oh, so we're. I was going to talk about Forza. Gamer versus Racer, but we can oh. talk about this really quick. So. Yeah, yeah. So putting a pin in the Sim Expo, we had Game Stock Car Extreme there, and they were showing off some uh, some new content. Here is the Lancer Rallycross on what I believe is the first dirt track for Game Stock Car. Well, we know that it can be done well because R Factor had a ton of dirt content that I love. This looks really good, though. Oh, this looks fantastic. Like watching, and this guy's a good driver, but uh, it looks really realistic it does it, it looks it looks awesome i'm really looking forward to to seeing what they do and aren't they gonna have some stadium trucks yeah stadium trucks that's gonna be 
the most exciting thing, I believe. Yeah, I agree. So yeah, they had that. So that's the Lancer. That was the, that was the Husingfeld. Yes, that's the Husingfeld setup, which was a pretty nice looking rig. Yeah. <laughs> did you see? Did you? See, I don't know if you saw the footage. Uh, there was some pro driver that drove the monitor. They, how they, the monitor kind of just. They were able to hinge, tilt, hinge it, it in and out. out. Yeah, that's the word. Oh, I was that's pretty for. sweet. So, uh, and then speaking of the Lancer, today uh, Re Riza released this video, which is this is the I can't remember the name off the top of my head, but this is essentially the GT asphalt style uh, Lancer series that runs in Brazil, and um, and it's it's kind of an interesting series. They run it's a multi class where they have kind of amateur drivers and pro drivers, and the pro drivers drive these cars with the big wings. So, uh, yeah, another GT series. I mean, to some degree, or not really GT, but touring car. Um, Reza has quite a few touring cars at the moment. Different series. Yeah, yeah they do. Because you have, like, well, the, the, the whole the whole title's pretty, I mean, it's, it was built originally about the, Bra you know, around the Brazilian stock car. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, that was kind of like a touring car. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly that. And then they came out with the, uh, the Marcos Petrobras series or something. So. Um, now we talk about dirt, and we get the question: Is I racing ever going to do dirt, Steve and Polly? We sure hope so. Hashtag soon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's not fair. I racing doesn't use soon on something that far off. No, yeah, I don't think that's in the in, falls in the soon category. Um, so, hey, my wife's in here, Andrea Lopez. Everybody say hi to my wife in chat. You got Andrea. You got to change your last name there. You're no longer Andrea Lopez. <laughs> um, so there's my wife, guys, in the in the chat room. Uh, so there was a Forza Gamer versus Racer, and this guy was actually um, he's actually part of Team Redline. Uh -huh. he, I, and he goes by Izzy, but I'm not sure what his his real name was off the top of my head. And maybe somebody can share that with us if they um, if they knew that. Do we have that video? Yeah, well, let's pull it. Up. I just wanted to give you a second because this beginning is. A trip. So watch the beginning. He, he's ready to go, and I think he's supposed to get set. Now look, he's like, wait, wait, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. What? I'm not ready. God, hello? Huh, what, what the heck? Okay, I'll just go. Oh, my. <laughs> and he has to do a U-turn. So I think, yeah, I think they were trying to stage him on the back straight up at the top of the hill, because look where the real car is right now. Yeah. He's coming up on the final corners. Yeah. So basically, it was a race around Nordschleife. And, you know, uh, virtual versus a real in Forza 6 in a, in a GT3 car. And so Izzy, or whatever, you know, I'm not sure what his real name was. Again, he's a Team Redline driver. Shout out to Team Redline. Uh, but uh, they raced. It looked like it was close. Well, yeah, from the beginning there, once he started going, they were about the same spot. Well, and look where they're at right now. Yeah, no, they... And it I looks like he's ahead. I, let's see, they're heading right now. Right, yeah, he's slightly ahead right now. So he got ahead, and then I think he, he ends up losing. We're not going to watch all seven plus minutes of it. No. But he ends up losing by just a. Oh, look at that! He has like his his brain monitor percentage at ninety four percent. At least that's what I assume that it that that is. Yeah, I think it is too. And then shows their beats per minute. Yeah, and the driver not thinking thirty three percent. He's just cruising. Just, just doing. And you know what? Look that, at his heart rate though. His heart rate's up to 155, while Izzy's is at 139. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm really not surprised by that. I'm not surprised that sim racers get heartbeats, I mean, getting up into that range of a real driver. Because you get nervous, especially, <laughs> something, especially something like this. Like, hey, Wim. I saw that comment. Sorry. Everybody's saying hi to Mrs. Ganji. Uh, just, does Mrs. Ganji <laughs> like the looks of John? <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Ganji has a daughter almost the same age as John. So... Anyway, oh, um, this was cool though. I, I like that they did this, mm -hmm. and looks like they needed to get a little more organized on the start. <laughs> yeah. Kind of jumped the gun on the start, and, there, and there's no restarting it. The GT3 car was gone. Yep, there's no reset here. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, Jason Ashfield, thanks for saying my wife's hot. I appreciate it. I'm sure she'll appreciate that too. Hey, GoPros in here, Pablo Lopez. <laughs> What's up, Pablo? We need to get Pablo in the on the show. Pablo, we want to do a, a live show with you and uh, have you on uh, uh, on via Skype. Wouldn't that be cool? That would be. Pablo's a great guy. I've, I've known Pablo for a long time. And uh, 
What up, Pablo? I heard you were at the Sim Racing Expo. It was uh, great to see that you were there. So, or hear that you were there. Uh, Andreas ran into him. I think uh -huh. he might have got him on camera briefly, too. At that, he said that he saw him at the real versus virtual uh -huh. okay. deal. So, um, so, yeah. What do we got next? So, next up, we're going to see if I can pronounce the name Kenny Humpy. You did it. Ah, yes. So, uh, last night, as you're seeing now, was round 15 of the NASCAR Peak Auto Anti-Freeze series presented by iRacing. Correct. Also, no also known as N-Pass. Um, that name has changed about 20 times. It's changed a lot. And, uh, yeah, last night Kenny was able to wrap it up. He didn't, he ended up getting a wreck, but I think he finished 28th and that was good enough. We were just showing Ray Alfala. He actually won last night's race. He won. And it was an entertaining race. I, first one I've watched for a good amount of time in a while. And, uh, yeah, that dynamic track, they were running all over the place. And it was cool. About lap 61 was the first time I really noticed uh, starting to see a bit of a, a, a groove come on in. Well, last week it was we had that at, yep. at Darlington. I'd like to give a shout out to uh, Landon Harrison, who I've met multiple times at uh, uh, I Race for Life. But anyway, let's talk about Kenny really quick. Kenny won the championship. Great guy. Totally deserved it. He's been sim racing for a long time. He's now fi he's got a 58 point lead, but he wrapped it up with one week to go. He has not finished well the last two weeks. No. He finished, in here we got uh, some footage of him being interviewed by uh, Tony Stevens on fan choice, fanschoice.tv. Uh, but great to see Kenny winning that championship. And you know, it's great to see that they've had three different winners, four different winners in the last four years. Yeah. Ray Alfala, uh, Tyler Hudson, Michael Conti, and now Kenny Humpy. Yeah. So great to see that that series, honestly, it's great <laughs> to see that that series isn't like the F1 series. <laughs> Where Gregor Hutu is just like, it's the Gregor Hutu show. It and is. Where, by the way, we've set, look at how many people we got watching. I know. We've set a record. Actually, our record for a live show was our Forza 6 first two hours. We had 450 people watching. But this is a record for our live this week inside Sim Racing. It's, yeah. So it's going to be hard to change this time slot so we're getting more people. It is. You know what, though, in, in defense of our own country... We have been doing it kind of at an odd time. We've been doing it at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, our time, mm -hmm. which a lot of people aren't off work yet. Yeah, at least not here. I mean, it is 7 o'clock East Coast time. Yeah. But, yeah, it's there is ne there's no necessarily uh, winning when it comes to this. Hey, we're winning right now. I, I, I love to see that we've got 192. We're coming up on 200. Woohoo! Yeah! Welcome, anybody that's new to the show for, uh, you know, welcome... Uh, to the live chat, we appreciate you joining us. Mm -hmm. So anyway, back to the Peak Antifreeze series. Again, congratulations to Kenny. Congratulations again to, to Landon Harrison last week. We have that Darlington footage. Do, do you uh, that? I do not do, have it. Okay, no worries. Uh, the, the track really rubbered up last week. Yeah. Uh, Landon started 32nd mm -hmm. and obviously had a setup that could manage that new dynamic track mm -hmm. and was able to win the race. Mm -hmm. So. Cool to see what's happening with the dynamic tracks in iRacing and how, what a difference it's making in the racing. Yeah. You know, and how it's affecting the outcome. Again, Kenny is not doing well with it. Yeah. The two weeks, he's finished lower than 20th mm -hmm. uh, since they've got the dynamic tracks going. So I think he's lucky that he clinched the championship early on. He had a big enough lead because his lead is starting to dwindle. Yeah. But he's got it. He's, yeah. he's the new champ. So. No, I'm, I'm certainly really looking, with only one week to go, I'm really looking forward to uh, next year with dynamic tracks during the whole season. And then also, I like to think by the time the series kicks off next year, iRacing is going to have a little more to handle on the dynamic tracks. And, you know, whatever tweaks and adjustments need to be done will be done, and it'll be awesome. While we're on that subject, should we just skip ahead and talk about your races last weekend? Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Um, over the weekend, I got a chance to run three races. I ran... Two races in the DW12 at Watkins Glen in the uh, IndyCar Winter Series. And then I just jumped into uh, a fixed truck race at Chicagoland um, on Saturday night. And pretty much I just wanted to try out dynamic tracks. I didn't put a whole lot of effort into setups or anything like that. And that truck race was just 
a handful. That was a 30 lap race, and I don't have any video of it. I got some video for the, the Indy car, so you can watch that in a second. But yeah, that truck race was insane. It was only 30 laps, but after eight laps, the truck was wrecking loose, which normally when you're at the beginning of a fuel run, you can run nearly wide open in the trucks. But yeah, I was wrecking loose off turn two, and it was cool. I was able to move around a little bit on the track and try to find some speed. So trying to change my lineup and make it so I wouldn't honestly just spin out. So yeah, that was cool. Very cool. Uh, Martin Arts asks, what license do you guys have in iRacing? You're A in both, right? Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're A in road and, uh, and oval. Yeah. And our, and our I ratings are pretty close too, to yeah. each other. I'm like, I'm in the 2000s on both. Yeah, I'm, I'm low 2000s on them too. I'm like mid 2000s on road, on road, low 2000s on oval. And I just honestly, I, I keep wanting to get to 3000. Yeah. But I don't, I don't focus and race enough to, and then I'll, I'll run a little bit. I'll start running a series and I'll, I'll get up to like 2700 or so. And mm -hmm. then I'll choke and mm -hmm. drop a little bit. But I, you know, I just need to race more to get up to 3000 or so. And uh, uh, I just, don't have the time. We got so many other things to, to check out here. Somebody asked what we thought of, the, of Race Room's latest physics. And honestly, I haven't had enough time to, to try it out. Yeah, I need to spend more time with it. A little bit I've done in the, over the last month um, seems pretty good. You know, I mostly run out run in the GT cars. I'm trying to think. I think I took the Z4 out when they released um, Spa last week. Okay. And uh, and overall, that felt that felt pretty decent. But I need I need to spend more time with it. Well, we got invited to do a uh, to sit in with some pro drivers, some DTM drivers. Mm -hmm. uh, Wim was actually invited too, and um, somebody said sweet Facebook post on your rig, John. We're going to talk about John's rig here in a minute too. Yep. But um, so yeah, we got invited to check out Race Room, a beta version of it. Talk to some real world drivers that are that are helping you know, tune and, mm -hmm. and get the physics dialed in. It, it's honestly great to see the direction they're going with it. Yeah. Because honestly, if they didn't start going this direction, I think Race Room would have fallen by the wayside. No, I agree. The last, you know, 12, 14 months, they've really turned it around. I mean, I remember, I, I think I first got in the Race Room when I, you know, started, uh, you know, blogging for the website now nearly two years ago. And... I remember the first time I loaded it up, I think it was the DTM 2013. I was just pitching a bitch about it. I, could, I couldn't stand the menu and the orb, and I hated the brake markers. I honestly didn't like the DTM, and then there's been a handful. Like, I love the Audi, the all-wheel drive Audi, the 90s yep, yep. Uh, IMSA GTO car. Mm -hmm. um, that thing is just badass. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's great to see the direction that they've... They've started really taking race room, and and I think we mentioned it on a on a show a couple weeks ago that um, you know it's just great to see that they're becoming a contender, you mm -hmm. know, and, and competing with you know a set of course of project cars, i racing, yeah, you know, and I'd like to see R Factor Two go that direction. We get crap because we don't know what we're talking about when it comes to R Factor Two, but bottom line is we want we want them to succeed. We, yes, you know, the more titles there are for all of us, the better mm -hmm. because then. It pushes development with the other guys. Game Stock Car is another. I want to see Live for Speed. I want to see the Live for Speed guys get back into it. Someone mentioned I didn't have the latest version in my uh, my motion um, video. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Yeah. So, um, you know, before we look at my rig and talk about my indie car experience on iRacing, let's go and look at Project Cars real quick. They came out with an update 4.0 last week, and... Allegedly, it was for the PC and PlayStation 4, but it took a few days for the PlayStation version to hit. So, I know all the guys on our forums are like, where's, where's it at? But, um, yeah, overall, I would say, I would call it a, a solid uh, update. It was, there's really no big, like, you know, this was a really big improvement, you know, still no triple screen support, unfortunately. But, it's good to uh, see that they're updating it, though. Yeah, it's good to see them updating, and this is a good incremental one. So I, I noted a few of them here. Um, you know, play, players driving the wrong way will have their collision model disabled. <clears throat> so that's perfect. Uh, Heads-up display, they have some real-time adjustment settings, so you can see brake balance and, and things like that. Um, let's see, a couple of them. Tracks, mov movable trackside objects that 
break or parts that break off of cars will now be removed. So now you won't have a bunch of, you know, pieces laying around or tires or whatnot, even though that's kind of cool to some degree. But, yeah. uh, and then track temperature now is displayed in game and all the menus. And they had, they did a few different menu changes with track temperature and things like that. So, um, yeah, I think some incremental improvements and, uh, yeah, it's good to see. And it's also good to see that this is really the first update since release that hasn't been really bug fix heavy. This felt like more tweaks. More tweaks. More features. And more features, add some things here, but there wasn't too many bug twe- uh, fixes. So that's nice to see that the, the title is starting to mature more. It is. And it's, it's great to see it. You know, any uh, development team, <clears throat> not just, you know, and especially since they announced Project Cars 2. You know, that they're not just leaving the people that bought Project Cars 1 hanging. Yeah. That they're continuing to develop for it and fix bugs. And I, I'm assuming that's just going to help them with the Project Cars 2 development as well. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, great to see uh, a comment here. Martin uh, Arts, Project Cars sounds archaic, but I could be wrong. Uh, it, it is to, I mean, no, I'd say it's more on the sim side. You know, there's Sim, Simcade, and Arcade. Yep. I'd say it's more on the Sim side of Simcade. Yeah. There's some Cade things like you can't control yourself, your car in the pits. Yep. Yep. Um, but for the most part, um, you can you know you can run realistic races, and it's got you know the real tracks. Yep. It doesn't have any weird power ups or. Yeah. Know, there's there's no uh, lottery spin the wheel type thing afterwards. Like like, six. like Forza Six. Yeah. So. Which I kind of like. No, I do like. Project Cars just lets you drive everything out, yes. of, the, out of the gate. You don't mm. have to win cars. But on one hand, I, I kind of like that in Forza 6. Yeah. Where, you know, you, you have to earn credits yeah. to, to advance. Because we, I think, and that's because we play Forza 6 for what it is. It's a Simcade, and to some degree, it's a little bit of an escape from these very hardcore Sims, which, you know, if you pound away over and over again, you know, sometimes, I, I know for me, I've had to take breaks from time to time because you just get worn out or you get get really frustrated so it's a good escape i agree so i've always said that it's good diversion racing Mm -hmm. so uh next up we're gonna look at took some more pictures of my rig upgrade i did over the weekend since post that photo on facebook and one of the most popular facebook posts we've had in a while oh my god people are just going nuts over it so um yeah, what did I do? So I put the 599 uh, Thrustmaster or Ferrari Thrustmaster rim on, and I tell you, that rim is awesome. I'm just loving it. Uh, and then also, I put together the 5.1 sound system, and uh, there you see the subwoofer not just sitting there. I like your cable management there, John. Oh my god. <laughs> I was you like, work on that a little bit was, there, buddy. I was like, I'm gonna catch slack for this, but uh, there's that. There's a custom mount I did for the uh, back speakers, which um, yeah, eighty twenty, and then uh, a framing house bracket from Home Depot for like three bucks. Eighty twenty is the shit. I mean, I it love eighty twenty. It is. And actually, I guess some can be referred to as eighty forty or whatever. But extrusion tubing is just. This is your first experience with it, and isn't it great to? Yeah, just be able to adapt things to it. It is, and I also used the piece of eighty twenty to mount the uh, the Sim Commander dashboard, and then uh, we had an old you had an old DSD button box you let me use, and uh, yeah, I think that, that turned out really well. I, I'm I'm still running the um, the iPhone app on my steering wheel, my little clip system I have, and uh, but yeah, it's, it's nice. It's nice to have that display there for secondary things such as brake bias, especially for the IndyCar brake bias and weight jacker and, and things like that. So Graham Botha, and I was going to ask you as well, John Darren, please give us more on the 599 rim. So what do you think of that rim? It's awesome. I, so I you like... were telling me you had to get used to the paddle placement. Yes, that that's the only um, I guess con. We'll have our review coming very shortly. Um, yeah, the, the the paddles as it's the same same shifter paddles that was on the 280 millimeter size rims uh, on kind of, I guess you could say, the stock rims for the Thrustmaster. That's 300? Wheels. That is 300, okay. yes. So that's 300. So that little bit of difference, and, well, it sounds like a little bit of difference. When you're driving, it, it you feel the difference. It's so much nicer. And that rim is so much lighter. 
than the stock so room. the forces trans yeah yeah when, when you, i haven't tried it yet john john kind of snaked it i was <laughs> out of town last weekend matter of fact visiting my daughter peru state college gonna give a shout out to not that anybody's gonna be in peru state college <laughs> who knows <laughs> yeah you never know I, i've had my eastern hat on my eastern washington hat yeah. on, and people have said hey i went to eastern or i live there near there anyway so I haven't tried it. So you you really liking it? Yeah, really like. Yeah, you really see the uh, lower weight on startup when the when the wheel calibrates. It goes a lot quicker. No kidding. So that that's pretty interesting. But uh, yeah, the only con I had was the shifter paddles. Since they didn't get moved out, but the rim did, it was a little more of a reach, and it took me about five minutes to adjust to it. But once I adjusted to it, I had no issues. I mean, I ran that uh, the IndyCar race whole watch here with it and didn't miss a shift. So. Again, it's just kind of having to adjust to it, but it would be nice if it has some adjustability or if they would have pulled that pulled those out a little further. So Yeah, it, that's again, that would have been my only con too. For me, it didn't matter much. Yeah. It's not going to matter much. Then again, I haven't tried it because, again, John snaked it. Now, we can easily swap it over to, to one of the other rigs, but um, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm looking forward to trying it and see how it feels. I mean, it, it's one of the best, feel, and we mentioned this when we showed it here on the show a couple weeks back. Uh, the, or was it last week? Anyway, it's like the best feeling Alcantara that I've ever touched. Yeah. I mean, it's like not only that, but it also soft as can be. It also has a good amount of padding, and that's something where I feel like other rims, like we had the, um, you know, I guess you know Logitech and their G series rims, and even some degree the uh, Thrustmaster TX, they don't have as much padding. So ha having having that padding there really softens it and just. Feels great. I mean, it's again, if you're in the in the market for a new wheel and pedal sets, and you're looking for a PC or PS4 compatibility, Thrustmaster is coming out with that Ferrari Integral set for four hundred and seventy dollars. That gets you T three hundred base, five nine nine steering wheel, and then T three PA pedals. And that that's what I'm running. That's what that that's what I ran this weekend. And Great setting. Couple things. Uh, Brandon Trossel asks, "Can the 599 paddles be modified easily to be closer to the rim?" It's not that they're too far from the rim. They're not it's out. Just they're not. Yeah, they're not pushed out far enough that and, way. And I, and I thought about it. If it really bothered you, you could only always get another set of paddles, and and screw it in on the back side of it, and so the further out, and then you wouldn't be touching any seams or anything. But I don't know. I feel like most people will adjust to it. I mean, I don't have huge hands. And I feel like you'll adjust to it. I want to. I want to comment on somebody that's in our chat room. The last fraudster, dude. You jumped into the wrong chat room. Just talking. He's talking about these guys take racing video games way too seriously. Ah. Uh. And dude, you're in a chat room with 195 others that take it just as serious or even more serious than us. So. No offense to you, but you're in the wrong room, buddy. I mean, the channel's called Inside Sim Racing. Yeah, this is that's gonna be a, a hard route to go. Yeah, and those those uh, Call of Duty and Battlefield and World of Warcraft and all those they don't take it seriously. Yeah, yeah, that's that's just a big joke. So anyway, I, I just think it's funny you're in the wrong room here, buddy. Uh, hey, everybody, dog pile on the last fraudster. Everybody, come on, get on him. I think it's already happening. <laughs> it is. I, I, I saw some comments from Wim. Um, so what else we got here, John? Um, yeah, so let's go. I'm going to fire up the race that I did back on Sunday, running the iRacing IndyCar Winter Series. And uh, I was in the second split. I think we had, they, they did something different now with the series, where now they only had two races going off Saturday and Sunday. And... Uh, Open setup, right? Open setup. We had like 80 plus people show up, I, I believe, for both sessions. So, um, yeah, I was in the second split. I was the number two car, so I didn't miss the first split by too much. Uh, started mid pack, or like I think somewhere like around 13th because I'm terrible at qualifying. Um, again, I, I kind of I had a setup from uh, last season that was pretty good at Watkins Glen, and I essentially just ran that and made a couple small tweaks. I had to, I had to take out some rear wing because I was pushing really bad. But um, yeah, I mean it. It was it was good enough, and I didn't have I didn't do a very good job in qualifying. First lap I spun out, and then I had to make the second lap my money lap. But uh, yeah, what I want you to take a notice here is this is the beginning of the race, clean track, so no rubber down, and uh, we're kind of kind of going to pop into this race at different points in time after we see me make a sweet pass here. So you're talking good job. 
<laughs> so you're talking about rubbering in. Now you you told me, you know, you, we've talked about this race a little bit. Um, there wasn't much rubbering in. It was like 31 laps. Exactly. Yes, 31 lap race, which is a fairly decent length race. It it was uh, two full fuel uh, stints. So uh, yeah, it probably took really? about, yeah, it probably took about an hour. Oh wow, that's a decent size, decent length race then. Yep. So here we zoom. We go. Uh, I'm running in sixth here, lap ten. Had to leave that up there so I knew where we were at. Um, and and you see lap lap ten, not really seeing any much of a groove down, if at all. Of course, when they do rubber in, you only really see it in the corners. Yeah, you're not really seeing much in the straights. Yep. So. This was my pass to go in the fifth place. Got a got a good run through the through the bus stop. Onwards and upwards. That's a colorful car you got there, John. It is. That is. It is a fabulous looking car. I uh, <laughs> I, I actually when I on my system, I, I went and I had to take this over to our other system that was single screen to render it. Hold on a second. Hold on. We need to stop here really quick. What happened? We need a high five. Over 200 viewers. Nice. Yeah. Thanks for joining us, guys. Appreciate it. And ladies, I saw Sep win. Wendy, I saw you in the chat. And my wife was in here, too. So, dude, now we're going to have to stick with this time. We're going to have to. Looks like that we're more popular in, Euro in Europe than we are in our own country. Man, who knew? That's cool, though. So back to your race. Sorry, John, so back for interrupting. Uh, no problem. So uh, if we get the fire up here. Oh, oh, went back to the beginning. Technology. Fast forward. So, oh, this this is good. It's, I was running in fifth place now, and this was the battle in front of me, and these guys blew by me. They were going real quick, and then this happened. Oh! And then no, that wasn't you. And, oh, and here I come. Swing. And then this. Boom! Oh! <laughs> so uh, Ricky just asked, "Where's the ISR skin? You're you're running the logo, aren't yeah, you?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I was I was getting to. I was running that on um, my rig. But because I brought this video over to a different rig, I didn't have that skin. We gotta get you, uh, Br uh, Bruno DeCarmo yep. did me an IndyCar skin. Oh no, I got it. Oh, yeah. Okay. I, I, during this race, I ran it. I just didn't have this set up on the other rig when I got this render. And here's the last lap, and I'm showing this because, as you see, not really seeing any any dark rubber spots. Yeah. So that's interesting. You know, we, we last week we showed a, a six-hour race, and that track was black. And a lot of people in the, in, in the forums and places were saying, well, that's too dark. Well, here we are, 31 laps in IndyCar, which is high downforce really pressing those, uh, those tires into the ground and not really seeing I'm seeing a line little form. bit. Like right in there? Yeah, I Looks guess. Like there's a little, I, little bit darker there. It's hard to tell unless we did a before and after. I should have probably, I should have done that. But um, yeah, so uh, that, was, that was my IndyCar race. Ended up finishing fourth in it. Should have had second. There was a spin that I got. I knocked me and a guy got together in an argy bargy situation. So, argy bargy. Argy bargy. That's what. Is that the, like what the F one guy say? That's what the IMSA guy says. Okay. Uh, argy bargy. Yeah, Colin Colin Fitch and those guys say uh, fish say. Oh, uh, what a argy, sweet comment argy bargy. from Rotten Steam. The colors of that Indy car is just as fabulous as you, John. Oh man. <laughs> Feeling fabulous, but um. So yeah, that's uh, so yeah, that was that was my weekend. And actually, the the funny story is normally if I have a good race, I just quit for the weekend. I got it. I'm out. I ran that race on Saturday. Same thing. Second split. Pretty much same starting position and everything. And actually drove up really quick in the early laps. And um, then my wheels started becoming loose. <laughs> and I this, warned John about this, and he, he, he obviously didn't heed my warning. I didn't. So this was before I had the 599 rim on. I had the stock um, T300 rim on, and I didn't tighten the screw. A little Phillips head screw on the collar. At, at the base. And I'm driving, and about like four laps in, I'm like, I don't know. And it just feel, and it got worse and worse. And then lap like six or seven went down to turn one, and I kind of self-spun. I was already planning on stopping. Uh, to fix it, but so a little background on that subject. When John first came to to, to work here, um, or, you know, for, on the show, he's been blogging for us for a while. But uh, he left the screw loose on on that collar, and and I told him, I said, you should tighten that thing up because it'll come loose over you know the course of a race. Because I did it on accident one time, and halfway through the race, my my rim started getting some wobble, and I was like, what the hell? Something's going wrong with my my Thrustmaster. Well, nothing was wrong with it. I didn't tighten that screw. And I warned John about it. 
And obviously he didn't listen and it bit him in the ass yep, in that race. It did. But someone asked, um, da, 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 da. someone asked, did I feel the marbles? And I don't think, honestly, I never really ran off track um, to find out. But I, I never felt them. Interesting. I, uh, we talked about this too. I'm really looking forward to seeing what it's going to be like during some endurance races. That, that's where it's going to get really interesting. Mm -hmm. So we have one more subject to talk about. It wasn't in the, in, the sh in the description notes. I found it right before we were going to go live. And check out this cable motion simulator. We had talked about how do you simulate Gs. And, and we just did the, our next level. By the way, check out our next level uh, motion platform review. We just posted it last night. That and a, a first look at the Fanatic gear. But check out this motion Sim, eight steel cables, each tensioned up to 1.4 something. I, don't, I, I missed that. Freely programmed tra trajectories in six dimensions. The thing pulls like 1.5 G. Check out this, this cable system. Oh, it, it is impressive. I mean, they, it, that, that thing is moving. The response rate on that is, is something. Look at that right there, especially. Oh. <laughs> so here's with uh, something similar to uh, Oculus. Carlos, I'll get to your question in a minute. I got it copied and pasted. Uh, Carlos Flores, uh, we'll get to your question in a second. Um, Q and A's coming up. Yep. So they're, they're showing like a flight sim and then a car sim, but that would be crazy in VR. Like that would just feel... it'd be crazy. But it would be crazy even without VR. I guess that'd be the best way to do it because you're not seeing it. There's no monitors in there. Yeah, you're just feeling it. But yeah, no, that is. I I bet that would feel really awesome for sim racing. Being able to have that movement. P. Hedek, I'm going to need a bigger house. <laughs> <laughs> I know. To be a sim racer, you you know, a prerequisite shouldn't be an a, a add-on to your house. So. Yeah. I got I to gotta make sure I get a, a house big enough to handle my new cable motion simulator. That thing's crazy, isn't it? So I wanted to share it. I saw it in the iRacing forums. Uh, again, right before we are going to go live, we grabbed the video. And uh, that thing's friggin' sick. That is insane. <laughs> Time for my favorite part of the show, Q&A. Oh, yeah. Got some good questions, and uh, make sure you guys post some more uh, in, in the uh, chat, and we'll get to those as we're wrapping things up. Man, we're almost at an hour already. Yeah, we actually had a good enough amount of news this week. We're, we're still at 200 people watching, man. This is awesome. Okay, so Sim Van Savin... Blah, blah, blah. Darren John, sorry, unless you guys' names is real super simple to pronounce, I'm not even going to try. Uh, Darren slash John, when will we see, when will the Thrustmaster T300 Ferrari Integral Racing Wheel Alcantara Edition be released? I see early December on Amazon. Can you confirm this? I thought it was October. For what was that? Sorry, I wasn't listening. The, the, you're not paying attention? Nope, John? not paying attention. The 599, <laughs> and I'm like, I'm, I'm one to, to, to say anything. <laughs> you go talking half the time, and I'm like over here getting chat and... Um, the 599 Integral. Yeah, I, it, it, it's, Octo it's October. That's what I thought, I don't, too. I don't recall. Let me look it up on Amazon, because I believe it's already there. While he's doing that, I'll get to another question really quick. J4M35R. Darren slash John, what settings do you have for F1 2015 for your pedals? I'm using T3PA Pro pedals on the PS4, and I'm struggling with lockups. That's a bug in, uh, on the PS4. Uh, I talked to David Greco at Codemasters, who worked on the physics, and he recommended just mapping your clutch for the brake for now, and I did that, and it worked. But you can try everything to get that to stop locking up, and nothing will work. So they need to up that. They need to update that on uh, on the PlayStation Four. That issue does not exist on the Xbox One, and it does not exist on the PC. Mm -hmm. But it is a problem. And if you don't have a three pedal set. I hate to say it, but you're screwed. Yeah, I, I cannot believe it hasn't been updated yet. I mean, at the release of F1 2015, as everyone knows, there's a lot of bugs. And they did a pretty good job, Codemasters, of uh, bringing up regular updates. And But there hasn't been an update in, in, for the PlayStation in probably about a month. So, uh, yeah, they, they really need to fix that because that's a big deal. John, you take a question. <clears throat> Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see. I agree, I agree uh, Silver Fry. Fire, they should let us review that motion frame thing. <laughs> they should. Wouldn't that that would be awesome. Be, that would be awesome. We need to find out where they're at. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you there, John. Uh, I had a question, didn't write the name. 
Uh, can someone recommend the play seat challenge at two hundred dollars? That was Carlos Flores. Oh, was it? That was okay. his question. Okay, as an entry level rig, I um, so he has a Thrustmaster TX greetings from Mexico. Yeah, I think for an entry level, it's cool. It, it you haven't even tried it. No. Nope. Um, I I'm not a big fan of the center post rigs, unless the center post is closer to your crotch. I guess is the best way to put it. Um, when it's too close to the, to the base of your feet, you know, for me especially, it, cause I have to push everything out cause I'm so tall. Mm -hmm. You may not have as much of a problem with it, but, um, heel and towing is really difficult. So if you're planning on doing any kind of heel toe shifting, yeah. it's going to be tough, but it, it's a, it's a good starter rig. I mean, it, it's definitely not bad. So there you go, Carlos. Got to your question there, buddy. Um, Marcel Ooms, Darren slash John. In Project Cars, you can do a lot of technical adjustments to the cars. Do these adjustments make a lot of difference to be faster, for example? I honestly haven't done much, and I'm not... John's the engineer here. So, from what I understand, it does. Maybe some guys in chat can answer that, but I'm not sure how much of a difference it makes. I want to find that out. I, I have an idea for a video that I'd like to do at some point. Um, I don't even know that's quite get done this year because we have so much stuff to review. But i like to go back to back in different titles and make adjustments and see how much of a difference that makes lap time wise. Um, I mean, I, I know it works really well in iRacing. That's what I have most of my experience with. And uh, you know, all, all that tweaking makes a big, a big difference. But wanna see if can get the same amount of difference in other titles. So uh, yeah, that's something that I'd like to do a video on that uh, at some point. Ricky's asking if you have hat hair. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I, yeah. Take it, leave it to Ricky to ask that question. He, he has the, the hard-hitting questions. Your turn. Uh, well, a comment had from A Aradi78 uh, said PS4 update for F1 2015 was released today. So. Really? I hadn't seen that. But, uh, for the PS4? Said for the PS4. I wonder if they addressed that problem that's been exi that's existed since day one mm -hmm. pasting so. some more questions from you guys some great questions coming in uh did you run out of gel ricky's asking ah uh, my hair's just getting too long needs to get a haircut uh okay so you asked the last or you answered the last one right yeah you you need to go through a few of them because i don't have any lined up oh well here just oh you're, you're gonna have a hard time see well you can I, actually zoom that up a little oh, bit if you yeah. want um so we asked, we asked her, that was Carlos Flores. Rotten Steam, are you announcing somewhere when or if you play your fan base in any given game? And someone also asked if we were going to do that today. Um, DH Paradox asked if we were going to do that today. No, that is not today. When we do that, we'll, we'll announce it in advance so mm -hmm. you guys can get prepared for it, practice, so we're all ready and prepared for that race. But mm -hmm. we want to do that soon. I think Wim brought that up last week, and I thought that's a great idea. Uh, Pablo... Lopez, you are not invited to participate with us uh, because you'll end up just uh, smoking the whole field. No, I'm just kidding. We'd love to have you, Pablo. That'd be awesome. So, Pablo, just to catch you up, if you're still with us, uh, Wim Breeze uh, said that we should do a, a race after one of these shows. Mm -hmm. And that'd be yeah. a lot of fun. And this, actually, I think it'd be better to do it. You're 211 watching right now, mm -hmm. by the way. I think it'd be better to do it at this time slot because uh, we'd get... Do a road race. Mm -hmm. Maybe we'll do a road race at this time slot and uh -huh. then an oval race oh. at the later time slot. We could do that. Um, so, anyway, not not happening today, but we'll we'll get to. We'll, we definitely want to do that. We think that's a great idea. I think it'd be a lot of fun. So now that I can uh, see the questions here, uh, Jamal Gander asked, uh, Darren, is there a I believe simulated quick release for G twenty seven? Simulahe. Uh, that's what it says. And rims that are any good, I believe is the question. The quick release, actually, Pablo's the guy to ask. He's the one that got me that. Um, but, yeah, that, that quick release is really nice. I haven't tried any of those rims, but that quick release was awesome. And, it, and it, we did a review on it. Check out our review here on the channel. Do a search for it, and uh, you can see exactly what we thought. Um, so let's see what else we got here. Um, True Racer. And is that Matt? Uh, have you ever seen Matthew? Yeah, 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 yeah. So if you're still with us, True Racer, love your channel, buddy. Um, 
Uh, what is the future of sim racing esports? That's a great question. You know what? It's a, it's a good question. I, I'd say, you know, <clears throat> I think we're seeing pretty much the best that it can get on the iRacing side with their pro series. Because mm -hmm. how would you do it right? It, and I'm, there's a way. I mean, where there's a will, there's a way. Mm -hmm. You'd have to have the facilities, but where would these races take place? And, you know, people would have to bring their... You know, yeah. it, it starts to turn into like the real racing world where you're having to transport your gear yeah. to get to the location. Yeah. Uh, but I'd love to see more of that. Back before online racing really took off, there was a guy that did uh, some racing called Like Real. Dave McCall was his name. And he would rent out facilities all over the country and have big LAN events. Dale Jr. showed up to one. Um, but he'd have these big LAN racing events. And... Uh, and there, there was never, and there would be like a, a competition for that particular day, but there wasn't like a, you know, a series champion. But mm -hmm. I think it'd be great to see it, you know, take off in some form or another, like like we saw at uh, Sim Racing Expo. Yeah. You would go to iRace for Life, you'll see all the, we got a race at iRace for Life next year. Yep, yep. Uh, but you'll see there's, you know, yeah. racing going on there, prizes that are being yeah. given away. And your idea is, is what they essentially do with, Esports, e-gaming, whatever. Now, where they bring all these guys into some insane-looking arena with a bunch of lights and all sorts. Of it's always so funny. They build these things up with like smoke and lasers, and here comes out these gamers, and it's like a 15-year-old who weighs like 80 pounds, like carrying his <laughs> keyboard, <laughs> looking kind of timid. It's like it's like I wish they would try to like do a little less ESPN and like sports of it, and just kind of like call it for what it is. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's already heading in that direction, and it would be awesome if we see racing now in that in that kind of where people get together as a bunch of races at one race. I mean, we do, you know, we did talk about a couple weeks ago how Project Cars is now grouped in with I think it's ESM. Um, yeah, and and it's like an esport. But that thing is yeah, that, that's coming that, up. Too. That, they're doing that. The tournament's going on right now. Oh. But it, but it but it's like a hot lap competition. Oh, you don't really race. It's 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 just. And now is it online? It, yeah, yeah, you yeah from from home you can do it, and you're just doing hot laps essentially. So, you know that's not that's not racing. I agree. You're up, John. Uh, da, 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 da. I had a question from Mike. He, uh, John and Darren, can we compare TX wheelbase with Fnatic V2 base, or are they at different levels? I think they're different levels. They are. I well, mean, not not that both on price and performance. Yeah, and the TX is. Really solid. I mean, I, I I do really like it, but yeah, we're you know the the um, fanatic is quite a bit more, and yeah, performance wise, it it justifies that that price gap. Yep. Uh, next question, um, Trevor Avery, where do you guys get your eighty twenty? So the eighty twenty you saw on John's uh, on John's rig. Uh, actually, we can bring that back up here really quick. I got this one. So this 8020 that you see here, uh, that was all donated to us by CXC Simulations. They used to get a bunch of extra of that. Uh, they used to get all their motion stuff from Frex, and all that 8020 would come with it. And so I have a pile of it. That that was my my original rig was built with that. Uh, now everything you see on my rig, the JCL to be faster, is. Uh, it's from, you know, that's that's their custom profile. So you go to 8020.net if you're here in the States. Uh, do a, if you're not in the States, if you're in Europe, do a search for 8020. I know the JCL To Be Faster guys, they sell pieces so you mm -hmm. can buy a kit. So anyway, there's just a lot of places that you can get it. Um, so next question. Still got over 200 watching. Yeah, that's have, awesome. I have a question from Andrew Gill. Uh, what do you guys think of the AI aggression for Forza 6? pushing around corners and whatnot. Um, and I think part of this, I, I released a video yesterday of me doing the test drive with the Fnatic products, which was more of a talk and drive, honestly. But um, yeah, and, and the AI was being ridiculous, running into walls, which was so funny. <laughs> and yeah, all of a sudden you're, you're coming up on something, dude, boosh, there he goes. I know, and I was talking, I was in the middle of talking about something with the wheel, and then poof, so funny. And the, the leader ran off the road at the end, and the second and third place earlier, hit the inside wall in the last corner of Nürburgring GP course, which is like really hard to do. And 
I think someone commented in the YouTube comments, and I'll have to look at this because I, I, was, I was racing on Darren's uh, profile, but there's a setting where you can turn AI aggression down, and normally when I race, I do turn that on because I find them on just regular to be kind of obnoxious. And I don't know if you have that setting turned on or off in your career mode. So that, that, set, I don't remember. that setting might have been left I off. Got so it was, I think it was base AI. I don't, I don't think the aggression was turned down. No, I don't think it was either. So and that, so that, that's what you see. I, I think if you're going to race Forza Motorsport 6, you should definitely check the, uh, the box that makes the AI less aggressive. Okay, next up. Um, Page Firearms. Fanatic setup overkill for a guy that only plays on Xbox One. Sure is a nice setup, just not sure if you can get all of its benefits on Xbox. I agree with that. Yeah. Uh, my opinion is that if you're going to plop down the money for a setup like that, uh, I mean, unless you're diehard Forza, and I mean, you can play Project Cars on it, Pro F1. Project Cars felt pretty good. Uh, but I, I think it is, in my personal opinion, it's a great setup, but it is a little overkill for just the Xbox One. So I, I would really... I mean, even if you're going cross-platform, Xbox One and, and PlayStation 4, I think it makes it more valuable. Mm -hmm. You really, in my opinion, need to go PC. Uh, then it really makes that investment worthwhile. Yes, I agree. You want to, you copy and paste, pasting your... Uh, yeah, yeah, I got, I, got a, I got another one. Go ahead. Uh, Troy Grimm asked, Dirt Rally worth buying? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. That's, yes, buy it now when you can save a few bucks in... Uh, in uh, early access. Uh, so it looks like Alan can't post a a, uh, uh, a link to his motorcycle controller. Ah, hmm, interesting. Yeah, I guess you can't post stuff like that. Um, if there was a way if I had you on Skype, maybe I could post it. Anyway, um, maybe you can just do a uh, show your. Actually, just go. People click on his name, and you should be able to go to his channel. Yeah. You be able to go to his channel and you can see his okay. his stuff. So you if go. you're interested in those those motorcycle controls, click on IA Systems Computer Controls uh, in the chat, and you should be able to. Actually, I'm going to subscribe to him right now so we see new stuff coming from you there, Alan. But um, so yeah, there you go on that. Uh, Luke Luke asks any news on GT7 release date uh, and then a release date on Nordschleife for iRacing. Uh, no news on GT7. I, the news that I'll give you is that I can't believe they've waited this long to not come out with anything. Um, you know, they're kind of being left in the dust by Forza, Project Cars. Uh, so they need, to, they need to come out with something soon, a prologue or something. Mm -hmm. uh, and then release date on, on Nordschleife for iRacing. I, I haven't heard, but I'm, I'm assuming it's getting quick uh, or soon based on... It sounds like November. That's kind of what they did. Uh, they something in the forums going on a couple weeks ago, and it sounds like it's going to be in November, which I think makes sense based off of what we saw at the Sim Expo. So, uh, another question I have here: Paul Hoggard asks, "Any news of a NASCAR title for the console yet?" There was, and I can't remember off the top of my head who was doing it. You Technics. You and Technics. Then they changed, and then they changed it to someone else, and it's going to be supposed to be a new one. And I haven't heard anything. I got a feeling they lost that license. I got—I don't think it did all that well. Oh, it, it, that's it's okay. It's kind of bug, bug riddled, and um, so anyway, that, I think it just kind of went by the wayside. I don't, I don't see a new one coming. Uh, Demaster three sixteen. Darren, did you play Micropro's GP two? Awesome game back in the day. I'm not sure if I, I you know what I had that one, but my system at the time couldn't handle it. And then it was just difficult to drive with either a, you know, flight stick or... Uh -huh. um, so I think I owned it, but I never really got into it. I had World Circuit GP, which was the first one uh, in that series, which was awesome. I think that was a Jeff... Those were all Jeff Crammon titles. But that's a great question and a great series. It would be cool if Jeff Crammon got back into, into sim development because he was, he was the man. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, Pablo Lopez says that he talked to Tony... Uh, this past weekend, and Tony said six weeks from okay. uh, for the Derby loose Ring. lips. Tony Gardner. That's right, living up to it. Um, question from David Osbaldiston. Oh boy, 
<laughs> just going to kind of slowly fade off there at the end. Sorry, David. Um, toughest racing sim ever? I'd say Richard Burns Rally. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was tough. I don't... I race has probably been the hardest for that I've done. GP Legends. I saw, I was thinking, I, that, that came to mind right away, but that, that was hard. It was very hard. Yeah, and, and for the time, too, that they had, had really uh, advanced their physics engine. So, man, it was, it was a handful. So that would be my two. Um, Psycho Cat, good question what happened to Jeff. Uh, there was, he did an interview not that long ago on some website or something. And, uh, but great, great question on what happened to uh, Jeff Crammon. Andrew Gill, when are the triple curve screens coming, John? I don't know. They, I they asked, wouldn't give him a tracking They number. wouldn't give me a tracking number. I, I asked for an ETA on their arrival last week, and I got, they're coming. They're, 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 they've been sent out. That's all I know. I don't know where they're coming from, so. Vulcan on my Grand Prix Legends comment, this was before we even talked about it. I hated Grand Prix Legends, but I did play it on a keyboard for years. <laughs> laughing out loud. Loved it once I got a wheel. Hard is an understatement, though. And now it's, that he posted that before we just talked yeah, about that. Yeah. Or did you just post that? No. No. no oh, so, so, yeah. So, um, and then Alan had another question on, uh, uh, Alan's the uh, IA Systems Computer Controls. Do you think SMS would make a Project Bikes if enough people asked them for it? I don't know. Uh, I yeah, don't. I don't. I mean, well, they already have a side project, which is supposed to be that Red Bull Air Race, which, by the way, is the second side pro project because last year at Gamescom or whatever, they announced that open world title. Ricky said your monitors arrived at his address, by the way. Oh, you bastard. <laughs> uh, Ricky's a smart ass. He's quick. He's quick. So, um, but yeah, they, it was like a world of speed, if I remember that correctly. Oh, that was a... Did that ever come out? No, it, it, they killed it. They killed it? They killed it. It's killed. So... SMS has already tried a side project. And well, that was like that was like completely separate. That was being. But uh, it was their cars, though. Yeah, and like, it was being published by somebody else. Yeah. But wow. But that's dead. Um, yeah, I'm so, not so, that, so, that was full arcade. Yes. Yeah. So I don't. I don't know. I'm not holding my breath for uh, a bike game. Hashtag soon on your BenQ. Ah, uh, preach. So yeah, you, you know, Alan, to to add to that, if there was. A set of controls similar to what you came out with that maybe Thrustmaster developed or Logitech. I could see more development being put on the motorcycle in the motorcycle genre. Mm -hmm. But since there isn't anything to drive it with besides a gamepad, and it seems like they do pretty well. I mean, the MotoGP and the Superbike series and those. Uh, by the way, check Alan, check out my, uh, my motion, our motion review. I tried GP bikes on that motion platform. That was a friggin' handful. Man, I was getting jostled all over the place in that thing. It was crazy. Uh, well, someone's saying World of Speed's still being pushed on Facebook. So that's interesting. Yeah, I, I, Maybe it uh, hasn't been I, given I, the kibosh. Yeah, I heard it was, but who knows. Um, what size monitors? They're 35-inch ultra-wides. But I gotta stop talking about them because it just makes me sad every day I don't have them. John likes talking about it just to make me jealous because he's the one that's getting them. Uh, if, if I'm we'll, just kidding. We'll see. We'll see if my rig runs it. Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh god. Good luck, buddy. Because right. if not, remember, like I said, we're just we'll just put them over on my exactly my 780 Ti. Exactly. Uh, I thought I had a question here and I lost it. Well, we're we should be wrapping it up anyway. We're uh, getting a little long. Hour and 15 minutes. Broke our record. 202 viewers. Uh, got some stuff coming up, and if you guys post some more questions, maybe we'll get to one or two more before we go. Um, thank you all for joining us, though. We very much appreciate it and breaking our uh, live record for this show. Uh, crowdfunding, Wim just said, Project could point out if it's a if a motorcycle controller would be a uh, uh, would be commercial or you know would be popular enough to, mm -hmm. to take off. Mm -hmm. uh, but so. We got some stuff coming up soon. The 599 review. We're gonna do some quickie videos on that. The, yep. the 599 Alcantara rim, uh, the Driving Force Shifter review. Mm -hmm. We're gonna be doing our our Fanatic Club Sport V2 uh, and V3 look first looks. So the V3 pedals, V2 wheel. Uh, our our in depth first look on that. Uh, spend some time with it, and then uh, our AccuForce review is coming. Hopefully, we're gonna get all these out. 
I don't know if we're going to have the Fanatic stuff out before the end of the month. Probably, but probably not. I'm going to try to shoot for the AccuForce review out by the end of the month. We've got seven days left, so... Um, we've been pumping out some content, though. 14 videos, 15 counting this video for mm -hmm. this month. Mm -hmm. So we've... We're pretty much on a on track to a, a video every other day, which we've already hit. Yeah. Uh, even though it's they're not coming every other day because we posted two yesterday. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, since John joined me here, we're definitely able to get more content out, do this live show for you guys. I think our blog's suffering a little bit though. Uh, <laughs> it's okay. Uh, Marcel Ooms asks, next time, same time, next time, same time again. It's going to be hard for us not to do this time again since we got more viewers. Yeah, I agree. Same time. So we do an hour later, though? How does an hour... Real quick, in chat, how does an hour later work for you guys? I don't. I really don't want to bounce around too much, though. Yeah, I... I, I, I really like to... I mean, we are coming out with the same day. You know, we've been within three hours. Yeah. Sorry to the U.S. viewers that are watching it late and wanted to join us in chat. Mm -hmm. You guys need to speak up and, and outdo the European viewers who stay up super late to watch us even at our later time slot. Um, when's the world going to end? Hopefully never. That was a Fwa K. I like, uh, I like Wim's comment. B-Sim Racing almost looks like an ISR affiliate. <laughs> yeah. we, we, we just had so many videos released. <laughs> we appreciate your, hey, Wim, thank you so much for, yep. for posting our, uh, uh, our stuff on your channel or on your, on your website. And by the way, I'd like to get Wim on the show. Yes. I'd like to, Wim, we'd like you to join us one of these days via Skype on the show live. It'd be great to just have you as a guest, uh, you know. John, are you there? Well, I, I, I know I'm looking because we're getting all the comments now from your question. And what are you saying? it's all over the board. It's, it's like some people are like, it's fine. Other people are like, Two no. hours earlier? That's pushing it for us, man. We struggled to get it, get it ready for this time. We were pushing it right to the minute. Yeah, it's... Yeah, this is Joe McDonald. I'm in the U.S. and I love this time slot. That's cool. Yeah, we'll... Hour uh, later, good. I mean, I, I honestly like this time, too, because it, it, it's one, it was 1 o'clock in the afternoon here for us. So it kind of... It, it allows us to get it done with and... And get on to other stuff, for, you know, at the rest yeah. of the day. Yeah. Um, Ellie Clark, we love John. That's, I, think that's, I bet that's the Ellie that you gave a shout-out to. Man, Ellie, you better be careful. Your husband's going to get upset. He's not going to let you watch John anymore. <laughs> um, now we're getting the same time. I think maybe we'll stick to this time next week. Okay. Um, and wait till we get too many um, complaints mm -hmm. from the U.S. viewers and see how that goes. U.S. or Australian viewers, let us know, since I know this is getting pretty early Thursday morning for you. P. He Duck? No, John's VW is not a diesel. It's a four-cylinder turbo? Yes. Cool. With a, with a manual transmission. Mm hmm So, anything else before we go, John? No, I mean, I got... I don't know how many more questions you want to cover, but uh, we can... Do you have any more? Yeah, I mean, I had a couple. I had um, Pablo ask if there's a HAL sensor in the, G, in the new G wheels, and the answer is yes. On the steering. I don't think on the pedals. That mm -hmm. has not been confirmed. I know they've said that it's in the, it's in the wheel, uh -huh. um, but not in the pedals. David B, yes, we'd like to get Ricky on the show, too. Boy, that, that'd be a kick. Yeah. I'm sure Ricky's a, Ricky'd be a he, character. I don't know if we want him on the show. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, I, I, Ricky, we'd love to have you on the show, too. I, I, don't, I don't want the extra work of having to put the explicit uh, tag in iTunes. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, we, we really need to get some people live. I want to get, get Jessica on the show. Yep. I'd like to get Pablo. I'd like to get Wim. Mm -hmm. uh, Tony Gardner said he would do a live show for my racing. So, yep. set, really, a, set a Corso. Andreas still... Knee. Yeah. Yeah. Marco Maserudo from uh, uh, the Kunos team. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, we, we, we need to get some live uh, participants here. I'm sure you guys would love to see Jessica too. <laughs> That'd be fun to have her on the show. It would be. So, anyway, that's going to wrap things up for the September 23rd edition of This Week Inside Sim Racing. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you for helping us beat our, our record of concurrent live viewers. Mm -hmm. Our previous was like 175. Or I think we got to close to 180 before. Sounds about right. Um, but the show is getting good viewership afterwards, so we love doing it and going to continue to do it. 
So for John Sable, I'm Darren Ganji. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you guys next time. Thank you.